So we have heat conduction through the wall of a house. Here's the wall of the house, okay? The indoor air temperature, let's put on the in, on the left side, the inside of the house, and on the outside, the outside of the house, and so the wall is in between. And the indoor air temperature is 20. Make a scale for temperature over here and put 20 right there. Then the inside wall surface is 18. Come down to, there's 18 degrees C. So the air temperature, but then the surface of the wall, if you went up and touched the wall, it would be cooler. Okay, then we have conduction through the wall, something like that. And the outside surface of the wall, uh, of the, of the wall is 7 degrees C. And the outdoor air temperature is 0 degrees C, so we put down here 0. So all this temperature is degrees C, and it goes like that out to 0. So if we just sketched across, let me see like this, 0, 7, 18, 20. So those are our four temperatures. And it's a little confusing when you first hear about it, but the air on the inside, the air on the outside, the surface of the wall on the inside, the surface of the wall on the outside. And so really it's convection heat transfer here. It's conduction heat transfer through the wall and then convection back into the air on the outside. The rate of heat transfer Q through the wall, Q dot, is how much? 1,200 watts. So that's what Q dot is 1,200 watts. So that's how much the rate of heat transfer passing through this wall on the inside as well as passing through the wall on the outside is passing through any section of the wall. It's always going through the wall, all right? 1,200 watts. Determine the X or D destruction in the wall. So we make a little control volume that just cuts the wall. That's our control volume. And uh, we have an exergy balance equation. Now, because it's, there's no mass transfer, you could have a control mass or control volume. It really doesn't matter. But what you have to have is you have to have the rate at which exergy is transferring across the boundaries of our system. Okay, so maybe we go back to an exergy balance equation the rate of change of the exergy in the control volume with respect to time is equal to the rate at which it's flowing through or in with heat transfer. Now, I'm going to put this in with the heat, and uh, I'm going to have two heat transfers, okay? It's, it's heat transfer in over here. Isn't that heat transfer into the system right there? But what about this heat transfer? This is still Q dot, isn't it? But but it's coming out, so I'm going to have a I'm going to write it as negative E dot Q out. So it's two rates of exergy transfer with two heat transfers, one in, one out. And let's just put it as a work coming out of the control volume. Whoops. The, exergy transfer with the work out of the control volume, but we know that's equal to zero because there's no shaft in or out. There's no work. True? But we put it there, and the last term is we have an exergy destruction rate. So there's our exergy balance equation for a, a system that doesn't have any mass transfer. Okay, so why do we strike that term and say it's equal to zero? steady state. So we just have to rearrange it. First of all, let me ask this. Did I get a sign in, in front of this correct? Should there be a negative sign? And, there, and, and you, you think through these negative sign, positive signs. Why was there a negative sign here? Because it was an out. And I want to talk about a positive quantity. And this I want to talk about as a positive rate of exergy destruction. But it's removing the ability to do work destroying something, so put a negative in front of it. So I want a positive quantity in my balance equation, so I put a negative sign in front of it. All right, so we rearrange this equation. The rate of exergy destruction is equal to the E dot, 
with the N minus the rate of exergy transfer with the Q going out. Thumbs up if you like that. Anybody lost? Ask me a question. You good? So now, what is the, it's proportional to Q dot coming in. What is that equation again? To the, the, that's right. One minus the cold or the lower temperature, typically our dead state temperature, divided by the boundary temperature at which it's coming in. Minus one minus T naught over the boundary temperature in which it's going out times Q dot out. All right. T dot D. Now, because I put the negative sign here, all right, I know that that's removing some exergy. This is adding some exergy. Uh, what about these Q dots? They're both 1200 watts. Okay, I've taken care of the negative sign already. These Q dots are 1200 watts. You could uh, try to stay with the sign convention and the Q dot on the right would then be negative and the Q dot on the left would be positive. But I just said, I'm going to handle that negative sign right there. I know it's an exergy removal with the heat transfer going out on the right. All right. So now what we do is we say that this is equal to, you could do it a couple of ways. Just substitute numbers, one minus uh, T naught is zero degrees C. So that's 273 divided by the temperature coming in. Let me write these down. This is uh, 293 Kelvin, 291 Kelvin, 280 Kelvin, 273 Kelvin. There you go. So this is uh, 291 times the 1200 watts minus uh, 1 minus uh, 273 divided by 280 1200 watts. And so we find the rate of exergy destruction is uh, 44.2 watts. Now, the next part, part B, says the exergy destruction in a large control volume. Extend that size of the control volume to come into the air on both sides and not stop at the wall. So what, it does, what does it do? There's still heat transfer in the air, but the boundary temperature of the air changes. So the boundary temperature right here changes, and it's now 293, isn't it, for the enlarged control volume? And the boundary temperature going out isn't 280, it's 273. So what we did was an enlarged control volume that wasn't right at the edge of the wall, but off of the wall into the air, both on the inside as well as the outside. Notice what happens 1 minus 273 over 273. That's all zero. There's no ability to put it through a heat engine as a clever engineer and make any useful work. It's gone or useful power. Rerun those numbers, and the rate of exergy destruction is 81.9 watts. It went up. Yeah, it went up. There was irreversibilities with the heat transfer in this region in here. Why are there irreversibilities with heat transfer, the convection in the air right in that region? Why? It's just heat transfer through finite temperature difference. Anytime you have a finite temperature difference, you have heat irreversibilities. And then the same here, convection on the inside, there are some irreversibilities. That's why it's greater, greater rate of exergy destruction. 